Hey there, Postal here. So this one's going to be a pretty tough battle. Uh, we've had a cakewalk so far this morning, to be honest. Uh, but a specialized SU-10 is no joke. Um, his rear gunner, especially. So, what are we in? We're in the LA-15. I literally just specialized this plane. Um, and I've been talking about this plane uh, in conjunction with the F-86A and the MEP-1101 quite a bit recently. Um, why is that? Well, in my opinion, it's kind of, it's a three-way tie between those three fighters. Um, I typically make the argument that, um, that the F-86 is the best of the three, and it certainly is the best overall airframe. Um, you know, has, of those three, has the best airspeed, best maneuverability, best altitude performance. Um, what it lacks is guns. Its firepower is abysmal. Six machine guns. The MEP 1101 is typically um, you know, the community's tier 10 fighter of choice. And the reason for that is it's ridiculous guns. Very, very consistent. 20 millimeter cannons do excellent damage, completely tear up enemy airplanes and, um, you know, change lives. It has pretty good airspeed, um, pretty okay altitude performance, and pretty poor, um, to be honest, maneuverability. Now, all that can be certainly adjusted and will be adjusted by those who specialize the plane. It would probably be better if I was actually able to hit this guy. I was not able to hit that guy. Come at him at a weird angle, so hopefully he will. Hopefully die before I do. Maybe. Frickin' SU-10s, man. Unless you're in a frickin' heavy fighter, they're not easy. Um, what is the LA-15 compared to those two? I mean, it sounds like the um, F-86 has this great airframe and the MEP-1101 has these awesome guns. What the hell's the LA-15 and why should I care? Well, the LA-15, to be honest, is kind of the, kind of a mix of those two. Um, you've got a pretty darn good airframe, pretty darn good maneuverability. Not quite Saber-esque, certainly not Yak-30-esque, but it's up there. It's got the power. Um, you've got pretty darn good airspeed as well, as you saw, it's getting well over 500 miles an hour. And as you can see, I've got pretty darn good guns as well. You've got three 23mm cannons on this plane that do significant damage consistently, which is, you know, key. Um, what it lacks in numbers is going to be your altitude performance. Um, it has the worst altitude performance of the three planes that we're talking about here. But it has significant um, airspeed that can, you know, kind of supplement or make up for, I should say, not supplement. It can make up for that lack of altitude performance. I can certainly get up to a reasonable altitude pretty quickly. Let's go ahead and get some freaking hit points back because I cannot take on this SU-10 without some more hit points. Alright, that's enough of that. It's literally one of those, oh, lost half my god dang hit points in two seconds um, situations, so... Come on, come on, get my HP back. There you go. There you go. There you go. Come on. Come on, you want it all. Give me it all. Give me some wrench. Perfect, we'll take it. I mean, we'll take it because that's all we've got. Make sure I get this guy first. He's the more maneuverable of all these planes that are up here. Excellent. This guy, just because he's the next one in front of us. So you can see the consistency of these guns. These three 23 millimeter cannons 
Um, don't hit quite as hard as four 20 millimeter cannons. Enemy bombers detected. But they're right up there. They're close enough for government work. There we go. And you just got so much balance on this airframe. I was thoroughly surprised. Looking at it on paper, I was like, oh, it's like a poor man's yak. What the hell's the point of this? Um, but this airframe is so much more than the metrics that it shows in the freaking tech tree. This airframe truly is ridiculously good. Really well balanced, hard hitting, maneuverable, all kinds of shenanigans like that. Clearly this uh, SU-10 um, is definitely wanting me dead. We've got to kind of do it on his terms, considering his rear gunner probably has uh, more firepower than the ME-1101 even, so hey. He definitely has more hit points than me. We'll knock out all his friends, so honestly I'm knocking out his friends, so that way the bots that are here will not be distracted by multi-rolls and fighters. They can, you know, simply go for this guy. Hopefully make some sort of... Ah! Freeze! Make some sort of difference. We shall see. I get the feeling I'm being set up to be killed after, um, after squall line, right? Freaking SU-10, it's no joke on the rear gunner. Got a pretty significant uh, lead here, though, so I'm hoping even if I die, we'll still have uh, still have enough of a points lead to be able to win this. Well, that's one way to take a bomber's uh, impact out of the game, is get air supremacy. Oh my god, that was terrible timing for him. Ridiculously good timing. I'm proud of you, Dang. <laughs> uh, oh man, this just made my day, I think. <laughs> and nothing against him. He's just, he's in a specialized SU-10, right? I've got an SU-10. It's not specialized, but man, I, I don't fear many planes in an SU-10. Um, let's head on back. All right, so we were able to get 15 frags there, almost 10,000 damage to aerial targets. Um, and yeah, pretty pretty good overall game, right? Just specialized this plane. Uh, we are definitely going to be pushing it to its limits when it comes to um, the equipment, um, kind of like I did with the F-86. I don't have uh, my equipment to the max not even I don't even have it to ultimate much less um, calibrated to the actual max at that point um, so we've just got advanced but you can already see uh, the impact this plane can have um, pretty darn good battle I'd say uh, I got that Akamatsu which I always like getting um, and yeah and we just made the SU-10's life a living hell um, and he probably kept coming to the center just because a light fighter in most uh, situations is not going to have that kind of impact. Um, uh, an F-86 certainly with its mediocre, mediocre, with its poor guns um, is not going to have that impact against an SU-10. Um, an ME-1101 is going to be able to have that kind of impact with its guns, but it's going to struggle with actually being able to like avoid the enemy's guns in that kind of situation because of its uh, maneuverability. Now keep in mind, I'm talking about out of the box kind of situation. Obviously, there's uh, a million people that have the MEP 1101 specialized um, and maxed out, and because that's just the plane that that is the top dog that people play at tier 10. I'm trying to open everybody's minds to beyond the um, the single or singular um, fighter that's available, right? So yeah, you're going to run into specialized MEP 1101s that have really good maneuverability. But 
that it takes specialization to get the MEP 1101 to be as maneuverable as an LA 15 out of the box. Um, I just absolutely love this plane. I think it's a really well balanced plane, and for those that want, um, you know, want some variety in their life, this is a great alternate tech line to go down um, than the MEP 1101 tech line. And I'm not taking anything away from this line. This line right here, I mean, I've got every damn plane on it uh, from tier four and above, right? Like I think I really enjoy every single plane, uh, yeah, tier six is, uh, but the rest of them are really, really, really good. Um, really, really, really strong and have um, the ability to have significant impact on a battlefield. Um, and the, the 1101 is, if you ask, And the 1101, if you ask um, the vast majority of people in the game, or certainly more than half the people, what the best tier 10 um, light fighter is, they're going to tell you it's the 1101. Um, I'm going to tell you that I, I don't think it's that clear cut. Yeah, the 1101 is incredibly strong. Um, you know, has definite advantages. Uh, but it's not just, I don't think it's just the, the clear, clear cut um, winner when it comes to um, you know, overall abilities. The LA-15 has the same airspeed for all intents and purposes. It has much better maneuverability and sacrifices um, altitude performance for that. But it's altitude performance on paper. Um, you can still get up to, and I have... Um, I'm not sure, I don't think I showed it in this battle, but I mean, I, I get up to eight, nine, even 10,000 feet without an issue because the airspeed on this plane is so good. Um, it's when you're trying to get above 10,000 feet that you're really going to have those kind of struggles. Yeah, the gun armament isn't quite to the impact that the 1101 has, but it's still very consistent, very strong for what you're looking for. And you can have an excellent impact in the LA-15. And beyond that, you can have a hell of a lot of fun, right? Um, I'm not the kind of pilot that, that is going to go out and play a plane for, you know, a thousand battles in a row. I like to mix it up. I like to mix up the play styles. And I like just to give me a little bit of variety as I'm going throughout my day. Um, the LA-15, I highly encourage... Uh, those looking for some variety but still want a top tier fighter at tier 10 um, this is definitely a plane for you and the whole LA-15 line is really strong as well um, the line itself doo -doo 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 -doo, is consistent from the lag 3 all the way up um, you get 3 centralized 23 millimeter cannons starting at tier 6 actually I think you might even get freaking yeah you get oh they're 20 millimeter cannons um but they're at tier six so they're hitting as strong as these uh, 23 uh, tier for tier right and they're centralized you're not having to deal with like the bf 109s or the p51s with the wing mounted guns and having to deal with that accuracy issue because it's kind of spread out everything right from the get-go is centrally located centrally mounted and so your accuracy is is just superior with this line um you know, up until everything kind of evens out at tier 9 and tier 10. So yeah, that's why I'm kind of going on my little uh, semi-rant in regards to the LA-15. There, there's always other planes out there. Um, and yeah, if you've already got your MEP-1101 specialized or your F-86A specialized, well then yeah, the LA-15 out of the box is going to seem a little bit weak. But I can tell you that even if it's n even not specialized, LA-15 can have an incredible impact on a battle. I j literally, literally just specialized this plane, and it was still one of my favorite um, tier 10 fighters in the game. I've only played two games now, no, three games now in a specialized um, LA-15, um, and of course not maxed. And I can tell you that it's 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 just great. It's a really really good plane. So again, if you're looking for that alternate can't go wrong with the LA-15. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay. I had a lot of fun uh, messing around with that SU-10 for sure. Um, and, but, you know, owning and doing what light fighters do, owning um, the important sectors and moving on. 
But thank you so much for joining me. Do you agree with uh, my opinion on this particular plane or the uh, the top tier um, light fighters in general? I know uh, my perspective can be a little warped sometimes, uh, but I would love to hear your, your opinion down in the comments below. Uh, but otherwise, I hope you have a great day and bye.